Welcome everyone, today I have a new guide for Diablo 4. In this video, we'll look at the tier 100 Necromancer for the endgame. So let's firstly have a look at the replays and also the footages of how much damage the Necromancer can do. So this is one of the endgame infinite mist Necromancer, and we have talked about the previous Necromancer used for leveling and also used for clear dungeons. And here we get to see the Necromancer in action in tier 100. So Ryo is thankful for Sakurian over here for sharing his build and also his perspective on the Necromancer. You can see that he deals tons of damage, there is AoE damage, and while pulling monsters together. While going to the Blood Mist, he is also invulnerable. So this build is actually very fun and also very creative. And I have been taking a liking of this build, so my plan in the future is I do want to make a Necromancer for my second ult for this season. So here we get to see a bit of the Necromancer powers in action, and you can see that he deals tons of damage by using corpses. Now one of the biggest highlights of this build is that when facing multiple enemies, you use the enemy's numbers and also strength against them. So in this dungeon with Zeratai's Lair, there's so many spiders, and you get to see a burst of damage. And this is incredibly fast in clearing out different waves of the dungeons, and also clearing out the dungeons for farming, and also for leveling, and also for the endgame. You can see our friend here is quite durable, and he does a lot of damage. Whenever he feels the need to, he can also use Blood Mist. Now, similar to all of our build videos, I'll be working with Mobilitics, and also provide you guys with a cheat sheet of the summary of the spells, and also the abilities, and also the choice of legendaries. So make sure you guys check the links below, and we'll be updating this build for you guys very soon. Now, because we have made a previous build guide on this Infinite Mist Corpse Explosion Necromancer, what I want to do is, I want to provide you guys with more details of the endgame gear choices and also some of the variation of the legendary effects. So let's come over to a Necromancer's friend's items and also his choices of stats. So starting with a unique one-hand weapon, the Black River. You can see this weapon has a really high item level to provide with high damage per second. It also has some really high rolls on the corpse explosion as well, which is a maximum roll. So this is a really nice weapon if you have high DPS and also high rolls of the unique effect. Now coming over to the boots, you can see that he is getting movement speed, shy above, plus 4 to corpse tendrils, and also plus all stats. Now I do believe the shy buff is providing him with a faster you know, farming speed, he can also go with more defensiveness. As for the pens, he is currently going with Corpse Explosion plus 4, Damage Reduction, Maximum Life, and also Total Armor. Now coming over to the Unique Boots, you can see again the Unique Effect is rolled at maximum level. This is also a level 800 gloves, which provide him with a little bit more armor. Of course, ideally guys, you want to get the higher percentage over here with Uniques, and also you want to get some higher lucky chance, and together with the Corpse Skills attack speed is really nice. Now, as for the chest, you can see the damage reduction to close enemies, bonus health, total armor, and also all stats. It seems that the Necromancer is getting a lot of all stats, and you can see this is the case for the helmet as well. He rerolled into all stats, intelligence, cooldown reduction, and also lucky hit while having a barrier. Now, if you guys remember, this Necromancer build will have a barrier when he casts his bone shield, and this is very powerful. Now, as for the amulet, you can see increased percentage damage, plus 3 to all corpses skills, darkness skills, and also movement. The necromancer does feel like a little lacking of movement, that's why you can see some mobility. But if you want to build a more tanky necromancer, you can do that as well. As for the rings, you can see vulnerability, damage, lucky hit chance, damage over time, and also damage affected by shadow over time. Now do keep in mind, the Necromancer actually have a lot of critical chance, and I do believe this is one of the reasons he's not going for critical chance. And as for the second ring, vulnerability, damage infected by shadow damage over time, damage over time, and also lucky hit. So notice the focus again guys, is going to be damage over time. Finally, as for the offhand weapon, lucky hit chance, cooldown reduction, more lucky hit chance, and also all stats. Now over here, a Necromancer friend also provided me with his own default builder, and I have the links available for you guys. And what you're going to see is, let's have a look at his sockets of choice. Now there are some slight variation with the choices of the gems. Notice initially he's going with a diamond for ultimate skill damage, but of course over here he's going with a purple gems for damage over time. Now briefly going through the malignant heart of choice. The first heart is just going with critical strike to provide him with additional damage while absorbing the damage. And let's have a look at the second one. As for the second one, he's allowing him to automatically trigger corpse skills, which is very good to spam your corpse explosion. 
And finally, let me move aside a little bit. So this is a quite important one. It's getting the brutal heart that allows the group fight to become aura. Now I do believe, notice over here it says one second, at least one enemy, oh, not one second. I have seen a particular socketed gem that says zero enemies, and this auto caps the Cryptify at level five. So do keep a lookout for those particular sockets. Now over here, if you're looking at the builders, you can see a small variation. So notice that this is a level five gem, which is zero enemies around you. Now as for the other ones, he's getting additional damage with the essence he has, and also another choice is the Creeping Death, which allows him to deal more damage with crowd control enemies and also unstoppable enemies will take more damage from you. So there is a few variety guys, make sure you look at the video and when you're following this guide, make sure you refer back to the videos because it has made some adjustment. Now during the recording of this particular build, notice our Necromancer friend is using this imprinted legendary effect. So this is the Shadow Blight damage by 60%. Now, while you're looking at the default builder, you can see a small variation over here. So this is the other one which goes up to by 120% with the Shadow Black Key passive. So do keep in mind guys, he is trying different legendary effects on the amulets to test out the damage. And you can be considering using both of those effects for your build. Now, because the default build is available, I don't have to go through all the basics. I think you guys can go through. You can see that he's going with critical chance, but some people have also considered to go with shadow damage. So this is a variation. I think most everything else is pretty straightforward. Over here, he's getting maximum life though. Keep that in mind. He's not getting the critical damage. And as over here, he still gets vulnerability damage. You can also see the choice of stats that he's preferring for some of his items. Do come back to the video because it might be a smart variation for tier 100. Now, because we have talked about the skill choices in a previous video, make sure you come back over here to go into more details for the Infinite Mist Necromancer. I don't think there's a massive variation for tier 100, but do come back over here for the default guide if you guys want to have a look. So I don't have to go through things again because we just posted the previous video. Now, one interesting part about the Paragon is our friend here said he didn't follow the the Maxwell GG Infinite Mist Paragon, and he does believe there are some perks to his own build for tier 100. So if you guys are free, definitely have a look at his Paragons to build for the end game. And because he has tested his build, and because he has cleared tier 100, I do think you want to learn from his build and also his Paragons. Now coming over to the skill rotations for this Necromancer for tier 100. What you're gonna see is he can cast Decrypify, or the Decrypify will be auto cast as Aura. While getting close to enemies, he can cast Blood Mist to trigger Corpse Explosion and while getting invulnerable. And notice that corpse, the Blood Mist is reducing cooldowns by a lot as he triggers more corpses. So this in rotation can keep him indefinitely with a cooldown reduction when there's a lot of enemies. And this is quite important. Now when there's a lot of enemies, to get your kill going and also to get some damage reduction, to get some damage, you can be using your Bone Storm for additional source of damage. And you can also see the cooldown reduction. So this Necromancer is very powerful, and there's a lot of cooldown reduction. And finally guys, you do want to use a basic attack to summon some corpses and get some damage reduction if you can. And as for the corpse tendril, you want to place it strategically so it groups enemies together. Now because this Necromancer is very straightforward, I'm sure once you guys get the hang of it, or if you have been playing this one, you know how the score rotation goes, so I don't have to go into too much details. Now there is a small downside for this build, which I do want to mention, its ability to do single target damage. Against a boss that does not summon additional monsters, you may be lacking a little bit of damage for the end game for tier 100. But sometimes if you do find a boss that has summoned monsters like this one, so the tier 100 for Saratus layer will summon small spiderlings, and this can boost your damage as you spawn more corpses from the spiderlings. So if you guys are looking to clear the tier 100 with Necromancer, Make sure you look for a map that doesn't have a boss, or maybe look for a boss that can summon more monsters. Or finally, maybe find a friend that can deal a lot of damage in one shot. So you can see here we're playing with the Barak Druid, and the Barak Druid is going to do a lot of damage to the spider in one pop. Because our previous video, the Barak Druid also does incredible amount of single target damage, so make sure you check out that one for the previous build. But if you guys haven't subscribed, it is a really good time to do so, because I'll be covering tons of Diablo 4 related topics and also videos and also guides. We'll be looking to the top meta builds, non meta builds, leveling up and also Paragon tricks. We're also looking to the latest events and also official updates and also changes to different characters and also different builds in the game. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and also turn the notification on, because a lot of you who are watching the videos have not subscribed. 
You can see 80% of the viewers who are watching our videos have not subscribed, so make sure you subscribe to stay tuned for the latest update for Diablo 4. Now over here, we'll have a small replay of the Necromancer's items and also a tier 100 run of the Necromancer. So make sure you guys have a look at the replays of the skill rotations of this Necromancer in action for tier 100. Now before you go, and if you guys didn't know, we have a new YouTube channel. And if you guys haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe and check out the behind the scenes and also fun clips and also more stories about us. And then you get to know me a little more personally instead of just reading the news and also the games, right? So I want to share a little bit more with you guys. So make sure you check this channel out if you're interested about Matt and also Uni. She's really funny too. And she's really shy. So I want to give her a surprise and do a shout out for the new channel to get some subscribers. <laughs> Thank you guys. I'll see you guys next time.